Olá, boa noite a todos. Bem-vindos a mais uma live do nosso irmão Pedro Dong. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more transmission from the uh, Life for All Institute. We're here with Igor from Mato Grosso. Yes, Hello, I'm doing Pedro. good. You're all welcome to one more broadcast. This time, as we just returned from Mato Grosso, now uh, we have two guests from Mato Grosso. One is Carlos Alberto Ribeiro from Cuiabá. The other one is Igor from Varza Grande. For those of you who do not know, city of Varza Grande, it is where the airport of Cuiabá is located. Between the two cities, there's only one bridge, which makes the separation of both cities. So they are basically one contiguous city. I did not know that. And this time I, I met the, the church of Varza Grande. Pray the Lord before returning on Tuesday. On Tuesday or Wednesday, I think it was Tuesday, yeah. We had a fellowship in Varza Grande, and then on Wednesday morning, we left Cuiabá, then to São Paulo, got here in the afternoon. So, praise the Lord, we had a, a prolonged uh, weekend, several fellowships, and a conference, the Lord opened the doors of heavens and spoke to us. So, let me ask now Carlos Alberto to share a little bit and to, to introduce himself and to also speak a little bit of this conference and then Igor, okay? Amen, Lord Jesus. My name is Carlos Alberto. Everybody knows me as Carlinhos, but my real name is Carlos Alberto. I'm from Cuiabá, and thank the Lord, I have been serving with together with the brothers since 1993, and we have persevered in this way. The uh, word of life has conducted us until today. Here in Cuiabá, we had a conference this weekend, and I could say it was uh, a really uh, mark for all of us here. We never before had a conference with so many uh, participants, over 500, we had to rent an auditorium. And it was an atmosphere of joy and happiness where I saw the teens and the children enjoying the Lord. And I even said, Brother Pedro, look at this marvelous thing. You can see the teens really in the rhythm of the heavens. And it was really 39 churches participating. And I feel like the brother's heart is yearning and burning for the word. One of the brothers, he had to travel for five days to be here with us. Brothers from Manaus, they drove five days to be here with us. And I feel like everything, what's important, they give, uh, they give value to the word of life. And for us, it was really uh, a milestone and uh, such joy with all the co-workers and all the fellowship brought us light and vigor. And from now on, our rhythm will only uh, improve. Good night, Brother Pedro. Good night, Andre and Brother Carlos Alberto. And those of you who are watching from home, my name is Igor. And it's a privilege to participate in this live. I'm from the church in Mato Grosso, Virginia Grande. I'm married. I also have my professional side. I am not serving uh, as an integral uh, full-time. But thank the Lord, my job has allowed me to follow all the positive agenda, to be close from the prophetic word. And this last weekend, it was actually pretty fantastic. Uh, before the conference had begun, we had a present, a gift from God, which is the uh, overcome. Uh, uh, we had the experience of the first come and see, global come and see uh, from Cuiabá. 
and all the word spoken word we noticed the happiness and joy from all the region of Mato Grosso and region and uh, we really see we could really see that the word has really worked in our region the children and teens with such vigor and and such energy with the attendance and also concluding the conference in the church in, in Varzinha Grande is really something that marks our hearts it was really enjoyable the days that we spent there together in fellowship, both in the service meeting and in the formal fellowship for breakfast, and also during our breaks and the Lord, it's really not leaving any room without being very well used. So praise the Lord for this time that we had together. Also later the Amir fishermen, they invented to spend two days together in a place to go fishing. They don't have no skill to go fishing. So for me, I really went there just for fellowship. And the Lord, in fact, he blessed all of the moment that we were together. I think that was really good for the saints in the region for us to get to know each other better. Always fellowshipping more, moving closer to one another begin to get to know each other better and follow more in harmony and synthony, fine-tuned together. So this, those are really good moments. I think, I believe those will be memorable days. We always remember in those days in Mato Grosso, not only for the state of Mato Grosso, but even other regions. So region 1 is really large. Saints come from far away. Also, Mauricio brought the uh, Saints from Region 6, several co-workers from Region 6, they were together. That was also really good. And also, I'd like to take advantage to say to all the Saints to closely follow, by closely following what the Lord is speaking to the churches, this brings lots of benefit for us for the churches. We are able to form a block of an army to advance together, better knowing each other, knowing each other's heart. This also made first to made this change of the international conference from nine days to four days and a half because we, praise the Lord, when we began nine days, really the international conferences was the only moment we could be together with the saints and the churches, never semester. But now it is different. Now every time there, there is a regional conference, we are together. Several saints are always falling. And this has been something really gratifying because the churches are well, they're advancing and they're practicing. This is what is best. They also receive the saints, news from the saints from the city of Araguaína, which are finishing an auditorium. They said they are really following the word closely and this the burden of token chains of double the number of saints is really great. So I believe that this is the same thing everywhere. The Lord is blessing them together. Praise the Lord for that. And the word that we will be ruminating a little bit tonight, it is in First Peter chapter 2. Now from verse 11 to the end of chapter 2. But this is already from First Peter 1. You can see that Peter 
He really was disappointed with himself because of his old nature. He thought that he was capable of following the Lord in his natural love and his impetus. But he realized that the living hope arrived at the resurrection of Jesus, giving him regeneration when he was born again, when he received a new life, and he realized that then his old man is really uh, disappointing. He thought that he could give life to the Lord. The most difficult moments of the Lord, his sufferings and crucifixion, and he ran away and he, he denied the Lord three times. So he realized that in our natural men, we have no capacity to serve the Lord, to be useful to the Lord. But praise the Lord, Peter, Right in the beginning of the epistle, here we see that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten as again the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So he saw that the resurrection of the Lord Jesus brought him a new life. It's new life. It is where we have a living hope, where we have an inheritance prepared in heaven. This living hope gives us the capacity to live on earth for God. Also, before entering in the verses today, to get the attention to the point of regeneration, since we're talking about regeneration, regeneration that is a incorruptible seed which was planted inside of us. This is in chapter 1, verse 23. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So Peter, he was not spacing out. No, he, he knew quite well what he was talking about. Since regeneration gave him a new life, gave him a living hope, he wants to make it clear that this regeneration did not come in an abstract manner. It came through the Word, the Word of God. Which is living and is operative. So the word of God, we hear the word, gospel. We open our hearts by believing the word. This word entered in us as a seed. And the seed, it is incorruptible. It's not corruptible seed, but in this incorruptible seed, raised and begotten us a new life, the life of God. According to the epistles of John, we have seen in the epistles of John, which is a divine being inside of me and inside everyone who believed in Jesus. So, this seed comes by through the believing in the gospel, but this seed must grow, and this seed, by growing, will lead us to a, a behavior, a conduct, according to this life, to this seed. Peter was speaking to the pilgrims, the sojourners, but actually we are sojourners on this earth, pilgrims on this earth. We do not have our own residence on this earth. We're not seeking to have lots of goods, possessions or being rooted on this earth because we have a heavenly home, heavenly country. So this regeneration brought us a living hope in this sense that through this life, we began to live by it. This life gives us a conduct, a life that matches this that Peter was concerned about. That is why in verse 12, it tells us in chapter 2, in verse 12, it tells us, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, 
that they may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. So Peter is quite concerned with the conduct, behavior of those who are helping them. But this behavior is not a behavior that comes from lots of teachings or exhortation. This behavior comes exactly by being feeding on nurturing this divine seed that began to be planted in us. So that is why in, in chapter 2, he tells us to put off all unrighteousness, but to earnestly desire the, 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 the milk of the word. So desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. The whole point it is to be to, to nurture this life that was raised inside of us and by, by this life growing it saves our soul, the salvation of our soul. For that we need the word. So how important the word it is the word that pray the Lord we are immersing on the teenagers transcribing it writing it down sleeping with God waking up with God repeating the word in our heart this our soul is being nurtured with this word this revering love I said in Isaiah 66 about the teenagers the spirit, the simple and humble spirit, added up to revering love for the word, which is this earnest desire for the word. This causes the God to find a way of rest. God then found in the heart of man a place of rest for him to have his dwelling place. I gave this introduction now. You can also share a little bit on it. We notice this reverence from the teens in the churches. The teens today, they yearn fervently for this word. They are the first ones to be in the front row of the meetings. They are the first ones to be involved with the come and see and the co-porting and through them, the Lord has found a way to bring the Lord to the meeting, to bring the, uh, the people to the meetings. Brother Pedro, I would like to share an experience from yesterday. We sure, had an experience, a very nice experience. Yesterday, in the prayer meetings, uh, the prayer meeting, the brothers went out for 30 minutes. And it was a, only a few people. And with 30 minutes uh, in the neighborhood, they brought seven guests for the prayer meeting. So this shows the reverent love for the word. You obey, you, you believe, have faith, and you practice. And this is a miracle. Brother Pedro even said that these miracles, you cannot... Uh, think of them as something uh, lightly. You need to believe that the word does everything. We are going through a transition and things are suddenly down, settling down. And before I confess that the young ones will bring the Lord back and I was a, a coordinator of young ones and the young ones even to call on the name of the Lord, it was such a difficulty. But nowadays, to see what's going on with the teens and the youth, I started to become marveled and, on the other hand, worried. Because if the young one is not uh, well taught, you uh, never know what's going to happen. And then the Lord brought the light in, in, in all these situations, if we put the young one and infuse the word in the young one, they are other, they are changed. They are someone else. Uh, a few, uh, a while ago, uh, there was a young one who went to the house of teens with his grandfather and he participated and he said he wanted to go to the streets to preach the gospel. 
And I said, you don't even know how to pray. And he said, yes, I know. Yes, I do. He, he went out to the streets and he said, no, I want to pray. He started praying for the, the people. And long story short, you cannot, you can, you can see the Lord working through the, the bread and fish project and all this, the word uh, which has been operating and transforming these young people. Apostle Peter, he did not take this word out of nowhere, out of nothing. Uh, this word about the seed being uh, watered, we need to water the seed. And the seed will remain. The word will remain. And I believe that forever the word will continue to conduct us. And it's the food that the Lord has been giving, giving us. And it's really been transforming the whole church life. Amen. We mentioned Isaiah 66 because in 1 Peter chapter 1 spoke of this seed, which is incorruptible seed, regenerated us, gave us a living hope. And in chapter 2, in the beginning, the first part, Makes of the building up of the living stones for the building. So I spent the first message in Cuiaba thinking that the Lord he has no need of a physical house. Maybe at the time of the church in Thyatira, they thought about building those centrist temples for the Lord to dwell in, but the Lord doesn't dwell in those house made by human hands. So what house is the Lord is in need of? Certainly it's not a physical house. The Lord wants to make us his house, his home, his dwelling place. And for us being his dwelling place, we need to make him to own the place, him to feel at ease, comfortable among us. If we are his dwelling place, then he must feel at ease, comfortable. Um, basically, for more than 19 centuries in church history, the Lord Jesus did not feel at ease in his church. And his will was not carried out. Whenever he wants to fulfill his will, there are opposite opinions, contrary opinions. Men think that they can lead things by themselves, lead God's work. So the Lord Jesus, our God, felt like a foreigner in his house that was, was not in accordance with him, was not in harmony with him, that did not fulfill his will, that did not allow him, made him to fill home. But praise the Lord, little by little, the Lord is finding a place which is the recovery of the church in Philadelphia. What would be this place where he will feel at ease? That is why we went to Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. I think those two verses are quite important because first to know, after all, which church actually give the Lord a house for him to fill at home. Here we read, thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where's the house that you may you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? So what will you do for me? How how do you know what I desire? What house will you build for me? Then he opened his heart to say, actually in verse two, ended up saying what he wants. For all those things my hand has made, all those things exist, says the Lord. So anything you want to build, I did it. So actually, I have no need of it. I, I need more than that. What do I need? And, but on this one will I look, him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, that trembles at my word. In the Portuguese version, and King James updated, and this it says downsized contrite in spirit. It is actually in Matthew 5. First of the nine blessings speak of blessed is the humble in spirit, 
For theirs is the kingdom of heavens. In other words, blessed are the poor in spirit. That is, they do not think that they are rich, do not think they are capable. Unfortunately, in the 19th centuries, many men thought they were capable, thought that they were sufficient to do God's work, thought they were wise. So the Lord had no room. But praise the Lord, the Lord showed us in Matthew chapter 18, he said, if you do not become like little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So that means that he was giving us already a hint. The ones who will give him a house for rest must have a poor spirit, a humble spirit. That is to say, a spirit that is fully falling short, uh, short of the Lord, not filled, thinking that he is capable, that he can't do things. But at first, it's a simple spirit like a child. And secondly is what? The trembles at my word, and King James updated, the one who uh, dedicates his revering love to my way, it is a heart. These are two things. One is to have a heart. Really, do not think that one is sufficient. Is totally eager for the Lord. He knows that he is in need of the Lord. He has no capacity. No power, but on the other hand, he knows the Lord can supply him through the word. So the word is the secret of us doing the Lord's will to fulfill the Lord's work, to, to carry out the Lord's work, to have revering love to the word. All of that summarized in our teenagers, in our teens. The adults, uh, I, I say it by myself, adults think that they, they have biblical knowledge, they gave already many messages, they can preach this and that, so like it or not. So they don't have that simple spirit so eager for the Lord. But pray the Lord, the Lord gave us this model. Teens have a simple heart because they love the Word. Secondly, they have a revering love for the Word, because for them, the Word is everything, because they realized the Word changed their lives. The word is operating in their lives day by day, so they really have revering love to the Word. They love the Word. This is something that's undeniable. undeniable. So adding up those two things, humble, heart, Plus, the eagerness for the word, revering love for the word. You add them up, that's it. Lord found his dwelling place, his home. Lord can do his will. Oh, this few years that we are experiencing this, the Lord is already doing a lot among us. And the miracles, that's why I also said in the first message in Cuiaba, that the signs and wonders and miracles are happening in our days because the Spirit is filling at home to operate. Why, for 19th centuries, there were no signs, miracles, and wonders? Because the Spirit was not at ease to carry out the work of God. But praise the Lord, finally the Spirit found a home. He feels at ease, so then He's really operating among us. That you can share with us a little bit. I'm not sure if it's the brother's experience. In the past, we did not have this freedom of arriving at a meeting, and we, you can say what we're hearing, but in the past, we did not have so much freedom. Today, we notice this re freedom during the meetings. We are not afraid of making a mistake, of, of sharing a testimony, of saying something wrong. And we also encourage the teens to share. Today, we, we, it is noticeable this 
uh, this difference. And on the other hand, what Brother Pedro just said is very important about the matter of having a spirit. And each day that it passes by, we know we need to have this yearning, uh, to have this seeking of following closely the prophetic word. But thank the Lord that with the miracles, we notice that the Spirit has freedom among us. And in fact, we feel this joy, this freedom that we are having among us. Even during the meetings, we see the joy, the happiness in the brothers. And we feel like the joy of the Lord brings us a lot of uh, enjoyment. And this freedom that the Spirit has, I was very impressed, impressed by the testimony of a sister in which she, uh, re uh, she reached someone who was living in Europe. How can the Lord use someone from Brazil in, in, in such a small city? How can she uh, reach someone so far away from Europe? So I was very much impressed. I will have to share about this testimony because I already started talking about it. I was very impressed. A sister from Varzia Grande, she had a very close contact with someone, a friend, in Italy, I forgot uh, the name of the city, which is Prato. And during a talk with this friend, uh, she was talking with her in the phone. It was a farewell. And later on, she even confessed that she wanted to commit suicide. And in the end, the sister wanted to pray for her. That friend accepted and they prayed for them for her. And she asked for an opportunity. She said, I want to give an opportunity for, for, for people to visit. Please, please receive them as if it was me. Because there will be some people coming to you. And immediately they already uh, got in touch with Tariki and Alini. They live in Europe and they already got in touch with with Cesar, Cesar and Cléris. And a distance of 300 kilometers, they did not see any trouble with that. They went to this friend of this sister who lives in Brazil and having fellowship with that person, with that friend, the Lord changed the whole situation. You can see how the spirit works, really taking someone who was going to death. The Lord not only, not only saved her from that condition, but she introduced her to the circulation of life. And now she uh, she's meeting with us, and it's really a change. And what is this? It's the freedom that the, the Spirit has been uh, acting among us. I really believe that this is the way uh, from Isaiah. It's from those who, who have a broken heart, who has a contrite heart. Those who are allowing the Spirit to move inside of us. Even if we have hardships, one thing we need to be clear, we need to have a strong spirit. In reality, Brother Pedro, it's not only one or another who, who are having these feelings. If it was only a few, someone here and there, it is not the case. So many churches loving the, the prophetic word who feel incapable but giving freedom for the Spirit. 
I also had an experience in Cuiabá. We were in the morning going to the conference and we were in the Uber. And I thought, look, I can do the same thing as, as always. Can I pray for you? But I instead asked him, do you have a child? Yes. Is he a teen? Yes. So I invite him to the house of teens. And then later on, we prayed for him. So the contact, uh, it's already with Ronnie. And Ronnie, you have to get it. You, you have to get him uh, to come to the house of teens. So this is the spirit being able to act as he wants through us. In reality, so many other brothers and sisters who are having this hard, humble heart to empty themselves and loving the word. So you realize that the house the Lord wants to live in, to dwell in, it is a proper heart which loves the word, his word. So then we can get in to our conversation. The whole point, it is that God wants to gain our heart. God wants to gain our heart until, until it really becomes a dwelling place for him. God's dwelling place in spirit. We'll see in the last verse of Ephesians 2. Then going back to the portion in the first Peter 2.11. First Peter 2.11, we read, Beloved, I beg you, sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. So it is the word war, verb war. So war against what? On what? Today on earth, there's a war going on in between kingdoms and countries to conquer land. Russia is invading Ukraine. They want to take over the territory in Ukraine. So the, the struggle here for territory, for the peace of land. But this war that Satan, the enemy of God, wants to fight against God and soul, it is a battlefield. So after all, what God wants to gain, what the enemy of God wants to gain, since the soul is a battlefield, what each one wants to gain by using this verse, these two verses in Isaiah 66, 1 and 2, we see that what each one wants to gain is a heart. The point is in the heart. That is why that I went to Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the sower, the sower went out to sow. A part of the seed fell by the wayside. And there was not enough land, was shallow, trampled, and then the, the seed did not grow. Second, the some fell on stony places. Yeah, they have earth, middle spring up, but it had no depth of earth. Sun was up. First persecution came in, first difficulty to live a Christian life. The rather gave up, they were scorched. The third was good. Uh, on good ground, but the thorns, which are the cares of this wor world, the lust of riches, what does that mean? The enemy wants to take over our hearts with the world, and God wants to gain our heart for his seed of the kingdom to grow. So the last kind of earth was a good ground, then it grew and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some thirty, some thirty. That is, what does that mean? There's this war going on. People do not know that the world, Satan, is using the world to take over a heart to take our heart away from God, and God wants to gain our heart for the seed of the kingdom 
It was sown in the heart of the seed of the kingdom. The seed, uh, when the seed grows, the kingdom will be produced. So when the kingdom of God will be on this earth by the growth of the seed. That is why the battlefield, it is our heart. Our heart, both the devil wants to conquer it and God wants to conquer it. God conquers it. He will build a house for himself where he will, he will feel at, at home and at ease. His will will be done. And also the gospel of the kingdom will be preached all over the inhabited earth. And he will have a house to live in on earth. The enemy wants exactly to distract man by taking this possibility from God gaining man's heart. That is why this whole struggle, especially when we begin to speak about the prophetic word, how much opposition, how much resistance, because this word is really as a seed entering the heart of people that are working. Those who received it, they love this word, they're living this word, they know that this word is gaining our hearts. It is really building a dwelling place of God, but the enemy wants to take us out. So that is why also I'm speaking right, Andrea, in the other live about the age range of the mighty man of David. It is a moment, it's an age range that the world wants to use, use up with professional achievement, with prosperity. They have a professional success. Whenever you have more professional success, the more you are soaked up in this world, you don't have time for anything else. In the time that remains, you apply for your family. There's no time left for God. So it, that's a trap. God wants to gain our hearts. So we're speaking that for these people who are totally taken up, the whole time taken up by the world, by the professional side, we are saying to them, it's pointless for you just to give exhortation, I work a little less and serve the Lord. It's pointless because they can't see a way out. They can't see that he can dedicate some time for the Lord. Time is totally consumed. But if you go before the Lord and have wisdom to bring the brother to be in a fellowship, be closer to the word of a fellowship, certainly will be opening his vision, this person, and they will see that the time they began to dedicate for the Lord will not be lacking in the professional life. Rather, the Lord provides the other side. The Lord gives prosperity while you're sleeping while serving the Lord. There are several cases like that. At the beginning, a brother said, God would have no time, but then when he began to follow a little bit, they praise the Lord. I have several cases of those. They are totally involved with the work, serving the Lord together with us. It's a moment for us to really see that there's this war. Satan wants to gain the heart to the world, it's all of the departments in the world. This department of sin, of our, the, the, the gross sins, even culture, and the time taken up by the profession. So praise the Lord, the Lord with the prophetic word, is performing miracles and touching the hearts of people. So that is why, why do we preach the gospel of the kingdom in, on the streets? It is exactly because there's a struggle in people's heart. We go out to pray for people. May I pray for you to gain their hearts? We're struggling for that, to conquering more, heart of man for the kingdom of God to grow here on this earth. Brother Pedro, as he speaks, it seems like he's sharing my experiences because in the past I thought that it was almost impossible to follow the positive agenda, to follow the word closely because the mature young one who is involved with his work, his professional life, he cannot see anything else. He's very busy. And Brother Pedro said, get closely, follow closely, follow closer. And as, as, as crazy as it may seem, 
um, I have been following the prophetic word closely, this word that's during all times giving us direction. Today, the 24 hours remain the same, but I feel like it's possible these young professionals who have their own businesses, who are working, it is possible to follow closely. And the Lord is doing miracles in our times. You only need to have this spirit uh, of having this poor spirit. This was another word in which I received a lot of light. The same way the enemy prepares traps for his uh, for his victims, there is for there is something for everybody: fashion, money, culture. This means that Satan imprisons people from all angles. But on the other hand, the Lord also gave us light and prepared a lot of tools for us to uh, free from, from all of this. Come and see uh, all the services being close to the word. And this age gap, this age group, it's very important because it really connects the teens and they're close to the intendants. They are close to the intendants. Because he is in, in his prime, in, in his professional uh, career. If he doesn't uh, apply himself in the professional realm, uh, he, he, we, we're always uh, seeking to dedicate ourselves, and the Lord has always blessed me. Thank the Lord, because the Lord was also a model here in Cuiabá, always encouraged us to be close to the word. We had the conference in Brasilia with Brother Dong. A Friday, midnight. This creates in us a love and a, a, a yearning for the, the word of, of the Lord. And this is what this age group needs, that the word will support them and they need to have faith that the Lord will take care of everything. And Brother Pedro, here in this verse that you read, it says that the flesh is is it, uh, it's war against the Lord knows that the, our heart it's where it grows his kingdom so if we start to feed this seed and our heart is free from the worldly things from, from the brave men of David the more the kingdom grows the more he can have his will accomplished here on earth in the end of times. That's true. So you can see how the heart of man is, is so far of uh, where there's a lot of struggle in our hearts. Well, Peter begins, continues speaking for the sojourners and pilgrims. He begins to say that uh, the heart is very contested. And then Peter said that we have to uh, be subject to every ordinance of man. Everything that was allowed by God. Well, since there is 
there are these ordinances of man, we need to respect those, we need to obey those. He also speaks of paying taxes. So, you know, the Jews, they love money. Maybe they, be, maybe they may be thinking, I'm in a foreign nation, I will not be there working for the foreign nation. So I'll, I'll be trying to uh, not pay the tax. And then I will uh, try to do a tax evasion, but they have this duty that they have to comply with. They don't have time to, uh, to all of that. Peter speaks about for us to suffer. We don't suffer because we make a mistake, but because of Christ, because of God. Actually, it's what we're also going through. We are fighting for the kingdom of God. The enemy uses evil people to attack us, to cause slander, using all kinds of lies. Well, this brings a big suffering. But on the other hand, Peter encourages the saints because all of that is part of the, the test of faith, of refining gold. The Lord is refining or the value of our faith is being increased. The value of faith increases uh, according to purity, as the, the value of gold increases according to the purity of gold. So as the Lord Make us to go through tests, be cleansing, removing our impurities. So he allows us to suffer unjustly, as Peter said in verse 19, because this is uh, verse 19. For this is commendable, it is, if because conscience, because of conscience towards God, one under grief, suffering wrongfully. Verse 20, for what credit it is if, when you're bitten for your faults, you take it patiently, or do you do good and suffer it, you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, we should follow his steps. Christ came to this earth, he took the position of a servant, came in and suffered all kinds of confrontation, of injustice, and we are also here on earth following his footsteps. By knowing this, this will be for our benefit, for the salvation of our soul. Oh, we learned with Brother Dong, Brother Dong was very much attacked. Uh, for their own benefit, people speak well of Brother Dong's ministry, but in his time, they were the ones who attacked him. Brother Dong suffered a lot, but he never paid back any injustice. He really gave to the one who judges rightfully as the Lord Jesus. He learned it. Of course, that doesn't mean that we should also take precaution in earthly atmosphere. Of course, we if there's something that we uh, take action, we do it. But we don't use the same uh, vile means of slander and lies. So that's why we, we, we commit to the one who... Commit him to him who judges righteousness. Let me now finish with verse 25. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. I really like from a young age, from this phrase, this title of the Lord Jesus, shepherd and overseer of your souls. Because what part of our being that is most need of shepherding, of care. It is exactly our soul. So, when the Lord Jesus came to this earth in Matthew 9, came in to preach the gospel of the kingdom, exactly to gain our heart, plant, plant a seed of the kingdom in our heart, to grow and become the kingdom. He found people here totally a shepherd without sheep, weary and scattered, 
This is the condition that we find people on earth. Because you can see that he has to worry about his livelihood. Still, as his uh, citizen duties, we just had, had to have to pay tax. And so, work justly, cannot work unjustly to make money in a beautiful way. So, see the pressure that somebody has. And so, he has pressure. Uh, there's a family pressure, social pressure. So he must have be successful in his professional life, social life. As a very hard pressure, pressure in all directions. So imagine, our soul was not made to bear all that load without a, sh a shepherd. And our shepherd is our Lord Jesus. His word that really makes our soul to be in the right place, balanced to bear this load. But imagine somebody who do not have the Lord will bear all that load in the soul. People is crushed. That is why among us are those who want to take their lives because they, they cannot bear to live. People do not know what to do. They, they live constantly in anguish, in anxiety, living super stressed out. People who are got into the panic syndrome. So this is actually the condition that mostly generalized in our society. But praise the Lord, on the moment that we receive the Lord, we receive the seed of life, this incorruptible seed, from the moment that we began to earnestly desire the, the pure milk of the word, on the moment that we be, began to allow this word to feed us, to give us direction, to shepherd us, to govern us, praise the Lord, our soul is not like a boat adrift. In our soul, we have there's someone conducting, there's someone governing it. So we have a, a shepherd, an overseer of our souls. He knows what our souls in need of. That is why I, I'd like to say, dear brothers and sisters, we love the Lord. We love everything He's doing among us. And we have lots of pressure. It's, yes, family pressure, social pressure, professional pressure. And now we also have a pressure in the church life, of many responsibilities and everything. I praise the Lord. Today we are working in rest. I insisted on that quite a lot. The only thing that we need to live under this whole pressure it is to have the Lord's presence. With the Lord's presence, we have everything. With the Lord's presence, our soul. As a shepherd and overseer, with the, with the Lord's presence, the Lord will lead us, will guide us. Things happen without us making too much effort. That's why we read in Psalms, and he gives to them while they slumber. So that is why Moses, he did not want to take on this responsibility of bringing the people to the land of Canaan. The Lord said that he would send an angel. The Lord, he said, if the Lord did not go, I will not go. So praise the Lord. The Lord had to promise him, no, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. Say, this is everything. This is everything, you know. We have rest for our soul. Why? No, no more need to work with this whole pressure. Lord, do it for us. Actually, the word of the Lord does it for us. We have everything. This miracle is everything that's happening. It's because we have the Lord, the Lord's presence, the word of the Lord. Wow. Among so much pressure from families, from work, from our jobs, Brother Pedro said pressure from the churches. We have the Lord giving the direction for our souls. And this is what 
really helps us to be firm, to be steady in the Lord. And this is what gives me security uh, to follow the Lord. And the tools really allows us to enjoy the word and enjoy uh, the presence of God. Here in Cuiabá, we have the house of teens and a bridge a bridge uh, unites one city from the other. <laughs> and we are very involved in the House of Teens in the two cities. And this allows us to have more proximity to the Word. And we enjoy of more immersion, more war cries, and more uh, practicing in the streets through co-porting. And we really notice the people uh, afflicted, the people suffering, uh, the, these young ones who have no experience in, 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 this, in society. They are in, in so much uh, suffering, but no direction. That's why there is this direction. We need the seed to take to the people's hearts. Amen. And this verse right here Amen. in this life brings more light to us. Because you were... This word about serving in while resting we have received more light because now we not only have someone who who shepherds us but also supervises our soul he knows what needs to be done to bring this uh, uh balance many times we feel unbalanced our minds are rushing but this supervisor he knows what we need that's why he has insisted with us, word, do not miss out on the word. Always be close to the word, transcription, immersion. I've been uh, very, I, I, I'm being helped with the transcription. And every time I stop and I start to meditate, there's always a point to enjoy. Because in this verse, I work in... I work uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And while I speak here, my business is going on. I work with uh, renting cars and sometimes there is business. The business is good. Sometimes business is bad. But if you do not have this pastor and this bishop to give you support and you have other responsibilities, family, church, the pressure is big. And when the Lord started talking to us uh, through this verse, my presence will be with you, brothers. Then you can really embrace, embrace the, the, uh, the burdens. And I have been always telling my, my family, I've never lived this church life so uh, full of activities, but I, I, I never felt this peace before. You will not be judged by other people. Yeah, brothers, we are human beings. We make mistakes, but we can we can uh, repent and go back and serve together with the brothers. I have also, uh, it reminded me of Psalms 23, that this pastor really uh, brings peace to our hearts. And the more we immerse this word is inculcated in our hearts we practice the tools it seems like we're not uh it seems like we're, we're not with such heavy burden like before now it's something constant brother pedro always brings us more burdens more burdens and the lord speaking more and we are not desperate with more uh, uh, to come we are only following the, the word following the Lord and serving him of course 
when we are under pressure, the Lord is the, our pastor. And we only need to believe in the word, have faith in the prophetic word. This is his word, and, and the word does the work and gives us peace. Amen, this is wonderful. Today we have lots of responsibilities, fashionable responsibilities. We all need livelihood for a family, social side. Even Peter speaks about paying taxes. All of that is part living in society. We have lots of family affairs, caring for our family. I also have a responsibility serving the Lord. But pray the Lord. We found a balance. We found a way. Really, the way that the teens really hold on to, it's our salvation. And the word, inculcating the word, and this word, not only carry out the work of God in an objective way to do the work of God to advance, actually the work of God in, in us also. Cares for our professional life, our social life, for our family life. It seems that things, if you are within the circulation of life, it seems that things will happen favorably. The Lord will put in his hand, even among sufferings and afflictions, the Lord gives us deliverance. This is so good. So the, we have a overseer, a shepherd overseer. He knows. Actually, he wants to gain our heart. Not just to make us suffer, but to gain our hearts. Praise the Lord. This life, uh, how to... Praise the Lord with your cooperation. It was really good. This broadcast, I think, that the saints could also realize it. And we are in this Sunday, we'll be giving the next word, message 18 in Sao Paulo. Now, let me already go ahead and tell you, husband and wives, heirs of the same race of life, will be entering the married life. This will be on Sunday. Sunday night will, that will be broadcasted. And on Monday, I'll be going to South Africa. My group is already going this Saturday. Amir, for example, will be going this Saturday. Going in the group on Monday. We'll be spending a week there. And on Sunday there in South Africa, we'll be sharing message 19. To wrap it up, oh, you're going together. I'm Amen. in your group, Great. Brother Pedro. I'm going together. Me too. Igor, could you pray for us and conclude the meeting? You are the young one here in the live. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus. Lord, we love your word. And thank you because you live inside of us. Lord, bless the conference in Africa and bless the flight from the brothers, from all co-workers, from Brother Pedro. We know that you want to do a lot of miracles. That you may bless each one going there. Also, all the ones who are listening and following the live closely. We need to follow your direction. Amen. Jesus is the Lord. Amen. Amen, dear saints. Well, good night, everyone. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. Bye-bye.